Hello my friends and welcome back to another skincare empties video, a series that you all seem to enjoy quite a bit. If you are new to this channel or stumbling upon this video, I have information in the description box below explaining what the heck this is and why there's so many products in it because no, this is not a, a normal person's usage of skincare. In fact, if you want the truth, I feel this is the most chaotic energy series that I do on this channel. I'm often surprised by what's in here. It kind of, you know what it feels like? It feels like a, a, a where are they now of skincare because it's never going to be products that I've been talking about actively recently. Instead, it's products that I bought, you know, six months ago or longer and finally finished. I do feel that it's interesting because it's kind of, you know, where do I stand now? Now that I'm used to this product, now that the hype and the newness is worn off, where do I stand on this product now? So I see why people enjoy this series, but yes, do keep in mind that it's not in, it, it, just keep in mind that it's chaotic energy. That will help you so much. And as per usual, I divide these videos up by category, sometimes throwing several things in at once. It'll all make sense. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the category of cleansers to toners. Uh, and you know, it actually, this actually is quite representative of how I like to use skincare, even if I'm not sure that I would repurchase a few of these. Let's start with this right here, the Chalk Chalk Green Tea micellar water from Tony Moly. So I love micellar water, but that one is not a favorite. I kind of hate panned that, if you will. Uh, it's, it's fine. It's not bad. It just, it does have a lot of scent to it. And if you are subscribed to this channel, you know what my new favorite is. Oh, you know my new favorite is the fresh one. You absolutely know it. So will not be repurchasing. The Tula Purifying Face Cleanser. I don't keep a lot of samples for these videos unless I have a lot to say. And the thing about that Tula Cleanser, I do like it. That was the sample size. I actually already bought the travel size. But the reality is, I feel like I could find a better product. I feel like I could replace that. I like to have a gentle cleanser somewhere in my routine and yeah, I feel like that's something I could replace. So I'm open to suggestions. A benzoyl peroxide cleanser is not something I'm ever willing to remove from my routine. Uh, the PCA skin one right there, I think that was about $40. Uh, it's, I gotta admit to you, it's difficult to be out of that. I've gone back to the CeraVe acne foaming cream cleanser, which is wonderful, but it's just a little bit too runny, especially in comparison. I wish I had saved some of that to show you how thick it is, so a, a little goes a long way. That bottle, that bottle lasted me for so long. I think what I'm gonna do is finish off the CeraVe one that I'll, I'll link you the video so you can see how I use that. I'm gonna finish that one, but if I go through it in, you know, a month or two in contrast to this, the six months that that lasted me, then this $40 product might actually be worth it. 15, 30, yeah, that'd be worth it. So I'm, I may end up doing that. I really did enjoy it. That does have some uh, added fragrance, but I've noticed the community seems to not mind as much in cleanser and it, it worked out just fine for me. The Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. This was the jumbo size that we received. <laughs> we received in PR. Yes, the Royal We. Do you know why I just had that slip? I have some slips on this channel, y'all. The reason I had that slip is because Ara primarily used that. That was one of her absolute favorites. I understand why it's her favorite, and uh, I really like it for the same reason she does. If I was ever in a quick mood, just wanted to get through my skincare routine quickly, that is so great for that. You don't have to, you know, double cleanse. You just throw that one on. It's, it's a pleasure to use, and you're done. She, I don't know if I'm gonna buy more of that in the VIB sale. I'm actually contemplating it, but she also has recently fallen in love with the Glow Recipe Blueberry Cleanser. So we'll have to see. It's a lovely cleanser though, especially if you do have a more dry skin type. So the Nola's Consentials Ginseng Aloe Toner, we're moving into the toners now. I enjoyed that, but I do think the Indie Lee CoQ10 toner has replaced that for me. So in a similar fashion to what I was talking about with this being a quick cleanser, that's why I like spray toners. They're just so quick. If you're not in the mood to take your time with a toner, a liquid toner and a cloth, then you know you just spray a toner and go. And ginseng aloe, I mean, that really is a great product. Nola Skin Essentials is a really good brand. Then the Pixie Clarity Tonic, because I also like to have actives in my toning step. I think it is great to just kind of get them out of the way quickly. I will probably repurchase this. I really, really enjoyed this. 
And then another sample here, the Stradia Soft Touch AHA, not a sample, that was in their uh, travel size kit. I love that. That's a 10% Mandelic product. I actually think I'm probably going to go repurchase that. It's only, I think, $15 or $16, so it's not bad at all and completely fragrance-free. Stradia is another wonderful, wonderful brand that I only just discovered. Um, the only the only reason I hesitate is because I'm still loving that Beauty of Joseon 3% bubble toner. But the Stradia is nice, 10% Mandelic. That's a great gentle AHA. So, uh, yeah, I... I'm probably I see myself repurchasing that in the future, even if not immediately. Essence and serum next. Okay, starting with the fresh black tea kombucha facial treatment essence that I did receive in PR. Listen, please remind me to not buy so much essence because I'm always floored by how long it takes to go through essence. It lasts for so long and I keep buying it. What am I going to do with all of it? What am I going to do with all of it? I do really like that one from Fresh. However, I don't see myself repurchasing it solely because, again, like I mentioned in the cleansing section, uh, I, I just, I love their um, cleansing water so much. I love it so much. And you're getting the same ingredients in that. And for me, I like variety in my skincare routine. So yeah, I don't see myself repurchasing that, although I might miss it. We'll see. I might miss it. Everything else is a serum, and I have a, a very large amount of serums in this video. Again, it's a bit shocking. But I will say, it is a pretty good representation of what I do. So I'm very adamant about these three ingredients, vitamin C, retinol, and salicylic. Absolutely need those ingredients in my routine, and then also an AHA somewhere. So you see how my brain works here? I'm not as much uh, focused on products m inside my own head. Instead, I'm much more focused on ingredients. This is a wonderful L ascorbic vitamin C from Rosen Skincare. So I heard that they were reformulating because people don't love how liquidy that is. Can I give you a spoiler for our Wednesday What's New in Skincare video? So your girl actually got SkinCeuticals in PR. Uh, so... Um, how do I put this? That's runny too! I was so floored by that, I don't know what I expected. I, I Well, it's a $160 serum. I expected it to be the perfect texture that everybody loves, right? But no, it's the exact same type of runniness. So, you know, again, another spoiler, I'm not a rich person. So for me, yes, the SkinCeuticals is going well, I like it, but this is $18. What would you do? You know what I'm saying? So I guess if you're rich, by all means, buy the SkinCeuticals. But yeah, this is, it's a wonderful serum. It's an absolutely incredible serum. I rave about it all the time. <laughs> Let's move on. The Murad Retinol Youth Renewal Serum that I almost decluttered, saved it, and now I'm kind of upset that I decluttered the rest of the series. That's actually a fantastic retinol. It is expensive, so for me, I've moved to the number seven retinol. But yeah, you know, it, it is a good product. It really is. I wish they would disclose percentages so I could know a little more about the ingredients and the formulation. But in terms of results, it, it did go really well for me. The Revolution Colloidal Silver Serum. That's such an interesting serum. It combines salicylic with colloidal. You know how uh, the Inky List came out with that succinic acid acne treatment? It's kind of similar to that. I think... <laughs> I don't, never mind. That Did that make sense? It's also like the SkinCeuticals product I'm going to talk about, kind of. Uh, so, you know, salicylic is this gold standard for fighting off acne, and you compare that with different ingredients that may help with inflammation, may help with healing, and that's the point of combining that with colloidal silver. I did get a few questions asking about the safety of colloidal silver when I talked about that, um, I think maybe on Instagram, actually. I would never recommend you take colloidal silver as a supplement. I know some people do. I would never recommend it. That is definitely into a, a very gray area, if you ask me. But formulated into a skincare product where it's not, you know, 100% colloidal silver anyway, yeah, I think it's absolutely fine. And I do think it has a lot of potential for helping with healing, fighting off inflammation. That's, that's what I saw with that. So I actually really really did enjoy that product. It is incredibly inexpensive. It's Revolution Skincare, and there are many brands that have a product like that for a lot more money. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I'll probably repurchase it, to be honest with you. I actually, somehow I finally have a lot of salicylic products, so not immediately, but I enjoyed it. Texture can be odd. It actually can get kind of soapy, but then so can the SkinCeuticals. Anyway, we'll talk about all that eventually. 
Uh, so let's talk about let's talk about these. The Biosant Squalene and Phytoretinol Serum, so that's another uh, Bacuchiol Serum. It didn't actually do that much for me. If I was ranking my Biosance products I've tried, that would be at the bottom of the list, actually. It just didn't do that much for me. I still love Biosance as a brand, but that's not one I see myself buying in the full size. I got that in a kit. The Kate Somerville Retinol and Vitamin C Power Serum. I like that, but I think I prefer to combine retinol with AHAs, which I know, again, that sounds like a lot if you're stumbling upon this channel, but I combine retinol with a very low percentage of AHA. I think that goes better, and uh, for vitamin C, I like it more in the AM, but just so you know, yeah, you absolutely can combine those ingredients. I found several studies uh, supporting that. The NEAD Multimolecular Hyaluronic Complex, I did enjoy that, I really did, but I think the Peach and Lily does the same thing for me, and it's much easier to find deals on Peach and Lily. So that's the product I'm going to be sticking with. And then the Claire's Freshly Juiced Vitamin Drop. I kind of hate panned that. It turned yellow and I just dumped it all on my body one day and finished it pretty much in one go. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened with that. I've heard so many good things and mine, uh, it, it just started to oxidize really quickly. Eye and lip care. Is it just me or especially with eye creams, do you feel like you'll go through more product than you actually do? I, I've got to admit, this is a, a very good representation of what I've been doing for months and months and months with eye cream, uh, but it also shocks me because I still have a lot of other eye creams and I keep buying them. I don't know why. Oh, uh, the Glow Recipe Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Sleeping Mask. What a name, but I love it. You geniuses, why didn't I listen to any of you? So many of you said you bought multiples of that set. Remember the set? That's what this is from. That's why it's a little bit smaller. So many of you were like, oh yeah, I stocked up, so I'll have that eye cream for a couple of years. And I was like, wow, what a good idea. And then didn't do it. So now I gotta wait till the VIB sale so I can buy another one of those. What was I thinking? Why on earth did I not take advantage of that sale? I may never know. I may never know what I was thinking. Anyway, it's a wonderful product. Contains uh, encapsulated retinol. Absolutely love it. And the L50 milligram CBD eye cream. That's my day eye cream of choice. Well, kind of. It's actually much more of a gel and it works really well under eyeshadow, under eye primer, and not all eye creams do. I can pull off pretty much any eye cream if I'm not gonna put eyeshadow on, but that one is just so beautiful with any kind of makeup, any kind of makeup. I love it so much for that, and it's $15. That is really hard to beat. I probably will not immediately repurchase that because I do have other eye creams, but I'll probably find myself going, why didn't I repurchase that? I miss it. And then some lip products. I'm just trashing the physician's formula because I'm tired of looking at it. It stinks. <laughs> it stinks, and I can smell it without opening it. You, know, you all know that experience when something smells bad, and you're like, no. I know that smell. The Kopari Peppermint Pout Lip Gloss. He really enjoyed that over the holiday months. And then Grande Lips Hydrating Lip Plumper. Still the most effective. I, I kind of wish they were more transparent about why that product works so well. Can I say it or will I be demonetized? I'll put it in the comments because it's, it's, it's more controversial than they lit on, but it works. It truly works. Moisturizer and sunscreen. This is so funny. This is such a funny portion of this video, let's just go through it. So first up, the Rosen Tropics Moisturizer. This was in um, the Fade Kit, which I didn't use as a kit, instead I've just been individually using the products. Uh, that is a really good idea, but I got an email shortly after I bought that kit that they had some issues with the consistency of their products, and I really felt it with that one. That was kind of grainy, but it's such a great idea. It's kojic acid, which is a wonderful brightening ingredient that can work on deeper skin tones. Rosen is a black-owned skincare brand. So I absolutely love the ingredients, but yeah, the consistency was kind of not the best. So I, I need to repurchase that and see if they've fixed that issue. I think that, I think it was just a batch thing. I don't really know what happened with that one, but yeah, I still finished it. It just wasn't, it wasn't the best cosmetically elegant moisturizer. The Peach and Lily, that's here because I had to finish that one off on my decollete because it was giving me problems on my face, which just blew my mind. Peach and Lily has been so incredible for my skin aside from that one singular moisturizer. I'd like to see them reformulate. I hope they do. That's, that's you know, maybe a selfish thing to say, but I don't think I'm alone in having some sensitivity. The Tula Hydrating Day and Night Cream. 
I've had a couple of samples of that now. I have to admit, I do like it. It's nice to see a company acknowledge that there's no significant difference between day and night creams. You know how some companies will go off about how, oh, your skin is doing so much more in your sleep? No, it's not. No, no, it's not. The big benefit that you get from going to bed in your nighttime moisturizers is that, first of all, you don't have the sun degrading anything, and also, you know, you, you I, in theory, you're not moving that much. Your skincare is staying in place. That's, that's the difference. That's what happens at night. So I respect that product, is what I'm trying to say. The Murad Night Fix Enzyme Treatment, I actually really like that. I have been saying for years on this channel that enzymes are kind of neglected, and that's not been the case as much lately. I think people kind of figured it out I guess within the last year, but that's one of the OGs, and you know, I gotta say, it's, it's a good product. It's meant to be used as a sleeping mask, though, just so you know, because I didn't read the directions initially, even though they're printed right on it, and I used it as a serum. Yeah, it's supposed to be applied after your nighttime moisturizer, <laughs> so <laughs> the e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream. Do you understand how much money in moisturizers I have in my collection and what's in my empties video? But the reason why I love this $12 moisturizer so much is related to what I was explaining with the peach and lily. So I have some skin sensitivities, and that e.l.f. is just so perfect for it. That hemp seed oil is a wonderful ingredient for more sensitive skin types. There is no added fragrance, and I think that's actually one of the biggest reasons why that's in my empties video. I have all of these beautiful moisturizers that have a little bit of scent, and that's fine, for people that don't have any kind of, you know, skin irritation, but I do. And so if I'm adding in other scented products, that's what I turn to, is products where I know that it's not going to be too much on my skin. Does that make sense? I bet you anything I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time I finished that, and not immediately repurchase it just because I have 10 other moisturizers to finish, right? But then a couple months down the road, I'll say, I bet I miss it so much. Why haven't I just spent $12 and bought it? It's funny though, it's not really about not having spent $12, it's that whole, you have these products, so use them, but the reality is, I genuinely like that more. I genuinely like the e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream more than some of the moisturizers in my collection. They cost three times that, uh, four, five, six times that. Prescript Skin Glycolic Cream, that's from the, that was PR. I don't have a lot of PR in this series. I don't know what, what's up with that. I guess I've been buying too much. But anyway, uh, the glycolic cream is from I, I, I Herb. I Herb. <laughs> See, the reason that's in my empties is kind of similar to what I was explaining with e.l.f. 5%, that's a low level, but lower levels of AHAs work for me, probably because I use other actives. You know, I think that with having retinol, with having salicylic, with having benzoyl peroxide, it probably works better for my skin to not also be using... 30% AHA, right? Again, probably won't repurchase it immediately because that Beauty of Joseon bubble toner is kind of everything. It's kind of everything. We have two oils. I finished my little Tarte Maracuja oil. I think it's so funny. I use oils pretty much every day, but they never make it into my empties videos. And you all know why, right? Right? It's because you need so little. And this, this I wouldn't have normally shown you because I really use this as a body oil. It was super scented. Balance Me Rose Auto Face Oil. But I wanted to show you how consistent I am as a person. This was a rollerball. Every time, every single time, if I get a rollerball product, I will snap and pull the rollerball out. And just so you know, no, it is not easy. It is not easy to pull the rollerballs out of these. This is determination that you are looking at. Pure and simple determination. And then some sunscreens. These are not completely empty, but sunscreen, as I've said before, sunscreen is the one category where I pay attention to expiration dates. Think Sun. This was PR. This company sends out uh, products that are nearing their expiration date, and I think that's brilliant. I think that's a brilliant PR strategy because uh, that gives content creators the chance to try products, and it doesn't, you know, pass along near expiration date products to customers, nor to donation centers. I was really thinking about that. You could, you might think, oh, well, if it's expiring, give it, you know, donate it. But that's also, that's not a great idea because it takes a while to sort through products that are donated. So essentially, you'd be donating expired sunscreen by the time it got to the recipient. So I, I think they've got a really good strategy. I'm always happy with those products when I try them. The prices are wonderful. Yeah, they're really good products. That's a tinted mineral sunscreen. They only do mineral sunscreens. They're a clean brand. And then this right here, this is a tragic story. So this wasn't in my declutter, and the reason it wasn't is because that has been in my work bag 
for about a year. You all know I'm not actually unemployed, I just haven't been working because I'm <laughs> an event manager. <laughs> yeah, joke's on me. Supposed to go back to work in a couple of months though. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, so this has been in my bag for over a year. And I finally found it the other day and I was like, oh no, what if it's expired? Sure enough, expires 2021-02-12. Wait a minute, this is Korean beauty. What if it's Britney Spears' birthday? Ooh, that's a dangerous risk to take, Alice. I don't know. Maybe I'll write them, actually, because that, that could be. It's a 0 12 That could be December instead of February. But yeah, anyway, uh, I pulled it out on, like, February 22nd. So I'll write them, actually, before I just declutter this and see if it's all right. This is nice. This is actually a really nice mineral Korean sunscreen. I got a recommendation from one of you to try the Axis Y sunscreen. I couldn't find it on the YesStyle site, though, so I did not buy it yet. Maybe I'll see if I can find it elsewhere. I have an allergy to certain chemical sunscreens, and at some point I may sit down and, uh, figure out which ones, but I haven't wanted to. I just stick with mineral. And this one, this one, by the way, this has a pink tint to it. And this isn't completely empty. Let me pump some of it out and show you. Look at that. See? Yeah, that's actually really nice. We're at the final category for this video, masks. I wasn't sure where to put the zit stick up, but I talked about this enough in Wednesday's haul video, so check that out if you want to see more. Uh, I, I won't repurchase these. I will stick with regular. Hold on regular hydrocolloids instead. And speaking of hydrocolloids, these are from uh, OK. They're just OK. They're a little bit too thin, but they, they still get the job done. Do you all want to know what hydrocolloids I'm eyeing? At the moment, I saw that BH Cosmetics has some really cute ones, and I am absolutely the person to put uh, uh, printed hydrocolloids on my face. I, I absolutely am that person, so that's on my wish list. What else do we have here? So we have some individual masks we'll talk about real quickly. The Pune Kang Yule Mask Pack. I won't repurchase this, I just will instead purchase the Essence Toner, which I'm loving. That video will be up in a week. The Cream Skin, this was a cute little printed animal face mask. It's cute. The Dr. Jart Clearing Solution, I actually really like this. I really like this. I probably will buy more of these. Contains some salicylic, some tea tree oil, niacinamide, sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Yeah, it's all the ingredients that work really well for me. So I'm probably going to buy some more of that one. The Saturday Skin Spotlight Brightening Mask. This was okay. I like the Dr. Jart one more. Here's my AHAs that I don't use all that often. So I got some uh, PR from Peace Out. This is the One Step Brightening Face Pad. It's actually really nice. It's a two-sided mask. Uh, not mask. It's a two-sided cloth. Now that I've tried them, I, I actually have to admit they're made very well. Their hydrocolloids are really nice. Wow, are they thick. Probably the thickest hydrocolloids I've ever encountered. And then, of course, my Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Peel. I will forever use these. Not too often, just probably about once a week, but I'll forever use them. They do so much for preventing breakouts. Then, my Skin Iceland, which I talked about in the Ulta video. I didn't use as many of my Hydrocool Firming Eye Gels because I've been using a lot more of the Good Molecules Caffeine Energizing Hydrogel Eye Patches. <gasps> this brand is coming to Ulta. I'm so excited. I'm so incredibly excited. These stay in place well enough. They actually do. So I'm gonna hold off buying this until they come to Ulta and then I'll be able to get points when I make my purchases. So the Skin Iceland Dissolving Microneedle Eye Patches, I do like those. I do, but I think I'm, I think that it suits me more to use microneedles uh, between my brows on my forehead. So that's the reason I'm gonna be trying the patch out Patch, pa pa patch Out brand. Well, that's a good brand name. Peace Out. The Peace Out Forehead Patches. Uh, but, you know, I do like these. Uh, I still have a few to finish, and I will be continuing to cut them in half because I don't have fine lines under my eyes. I have them instead on the edges of my eyes. And then this Elemis Dynamic Resurfacing Gel Mask. I don't like how cool this leaves my skin feeling. I actually really like the Elemis brand, but not this particular mask. It's strange. I feel like I feel like some people probably love that sensation, but but I, I do not. And that's it. We've come to the end of another empties video. I think in the next one I'll probably cover some body care. I have some body care empties that I just don't feel like including in today's video, but in a, in a future video we'll do that. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like and subscribe. Wednesday's video will be what's new in skincare, so I hope you stay tuned for that, and I will see you all next time.